Hello, Blake Grittis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. And today we're gonna show you how to make a watermark brush. So we're gonna make your life a little bit easier with some automation with your watermark, but not so automated that it's something like Lightroom would automatically applies it, but in Photoshop where you get some really elegant watermarks that are not obtrusive. So check this out. Bam, I got my watermark and oh, look at that. Now it's not obtrusive. It, it seamlessly blends in with my photograph. So let's jump into Photoshop. I'm gonna teach you how to make a brush and how to save layer styles into a library. All right, so watermarks can be kind of tricky. Um, the thing is, if you do a Google image search for watermark on a photo, you're gonna find anything from really cool, elegant watermarks to some of the most horrendous watermarks that I would even consider putting on a photo. So with that being said, I don't really do too much with the watermarking on my photographs unless it's for client base. Now, if I'm posting stuff on the internet, I really don't like my watermarks on there because if someone's gonna steal it, they're gonna steal it anyway. But if I'm working with a client and I wanna show them maybe a contact sheet or something like that, or maybe wanna show them uh, one of the images that uh, they might wanna have printed, it might be a good idea to put the watermark on there so that they don't end up running off to their local Walmart and printing your picture uh, on um, less than ideal paper and then not actually giving you the credit you deserve for your image. So what I usually do with this is actually make a watermark brush in Photoshop. So to do that, I mean, you can very easily do this with text, but it's a good idea to just have a really quick and easy way to just click and boom, you've got your watermark and it's done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to file and we're gonna go to new, and we're gonna make this 2,500 pixels by 2,500 pixels at a resolution of 300 pixels per inch, press OK. Now the reason why I chose 2500, it's not an arbitrary number, 2500 pixels is the maximum brush size that you can have in something like Photoshop, I believe CS6 and before. In Photoshop CC, they allowed uh, brush sizes to be upwards to 5000 pixels. So we're gonna leave it at 2500 for the sake of those using CS6 and below. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just type my name, Blake, Brutus, and before that, I'm going to put the alt code for a copyright symbol. So let me change this to black real quick. I'll just change this over real quick to black so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Change the whole thing over to black and so you can see what I'm doing. We'll actually make that bigger, press Commander Control T, make that a little bit larger so we can see it. And I'm going to just pick a very basic uh, font. I don't want anything that screams style. I just want a very basic font that just shows that I uh, want a watermark on my photograph. So even something like Calibri, that might be a little too small. We want something with a little bit of thickness to it, but not uh, so much thickness that it takes over the entire thing. What I find is the Myriad fonts to be really good for that. So we'll just do uh, Myriad Pro Bold. That's one of my favorite ones. Okay. So before that, I'm going to go press Alt on a PC. Now, I'm not really sure what this is for Mac, but on a PC, it's Alt 0169 and that's gonna create the copyright symbol. So now with that there, I'm gonna press Command or Control J to duplicate this, the V key to move it down and underneath. So it's right underneath, and then I'm just gonna rename this one Photography. Now I did that on two separate lines because I want them to be able to line up evenly. So I'm gonna press Command or Control T and just drag this over until the end of my Y touches the end of my S. Maybe move this down just a slight bit. So that's gonna be my watermark, all right? I'm gonna grab both of these, Command or Control T, make them a slight bit larger. I'm just dragging this to make it larger. That's gonna end up being my brush watermark. So what I need to do here, I'm gonna press Control Shift E to flatten everything down and go to Edit and go to Define Brush Preset, okay? So now I've got this brush preset, I'm gonna call this Blake Water. Mark. Press OK. So now I can close this out because my new brush is right here. If I press the B key for the brush tool, it comes up. If it didn't come up, I can just select it from right here. So if I choose a new layer, I can just brush this anywhere. Now the beauty of this is that I can make it as small as I want. I can press the left bracket key to make it a really small watermark, the right bracket key to make it a really big watermark. So you have a lot of luxury with the with it as a brush and a lot of really ease and convenience of adding a watermark to your image. Let's take this a step further though. So let's make a new layer and I will just go ahead and make this about 25% about of the image. 
All right, so now I've just got, a, it's white, it's just a watermark right on top. Now you have the ability to do things that are less intrusive to the photo, like maybe change this to overlay or soft light or um, you know, just go through your blending options and change your blending options so that the watermark actually becomes a part of the image and a little bit less intrusive on the photograph. So as you move this, if we press the, the move tool, we move this around, you see because it's got a blending option, it's gonna show through parts of the image underneath and we can also change the opacity on that to reduce that opacity. So that's one way you can use this in a less obtrusive way on your photographs. Now, we would obviously know that you could, uh, that the watermark here is not overpowering the photograph. And maybe if someone's got some really good cloning skills, they can get rid of it. But this watermark is really good because it, it, it does its purpose. It makes it so that someone really can't print it, but at the same time, um, it doesn't take away from the photograph. We also have other options for that. So I'll go ahead and delete this layer. We're gonna create a new layer and use that brush tool again. And we'll just make a, you know, about 25% watermark there, click right in the middle. Now this time, I'm gonna drop the fill all the way down. So when I drop the fill all the way down, what that's telling that text layer is take all of the filled white and make it 0%. But now if I double click here and go into the blending options or the layer styles, and I maybe make a drop shadow, you see that the drop shadow starts to appear. Well, the drop shadow doesn't, isn't not there. It's a representation of what that layer is. So even though the fill is at zero, we can still see the layer styles that are on that negatively filled object. It's a pretty interesting little technique to do here with your watermarks. So we could also do something like uh, with this drop shadow, maybe make the distance a little bit farther away kind of give it some kind of elegance to it. Maybe maybe increase the size a little bit. Okay, that looks about right. And then maybe let's go and do an outer glow or an inner glow. Let's do an inner glow. And we'll do a little inner glow on there. Maybe make the, the size of that inner glow a little bit smaller and, and just increase the range a little bit. And I'm just kind of playing here. You can really do anything. So now we move this around. It's doing the same thing. It's not filled with anything, so there's no paint inside there, but we can still see that invisible layer now that's on top of there. And here you still have control over opacity too. You can drop the opacity down here. So you still have that really nice um, watermark that's elegant, but it's even harder to clone stamp now because there's a slight shadow on every part of the watermark. So the watermark isn't intrusive. It doesn't take away from your photograph. It's a lot harder to clone and it still looks like it's seamlessly incorporated in the photo. So now in something like Photoshop CC, this wouldn't be in CS6, it's in Photoshop CC, they've created something called libraries and you can access your libraries at any time. If you don't have your libraries, you go up here to your window and you'll see libraries. If you don't see a library anywhere in here with the word library, just go up to window and select libraries and it will pop up somewhere on your screen, whether it's in here or it's off to the side or it's in your sidebar, it'll be somewhere. I like to have my libraries right here in all of the uh, stuff that I do with the properties and the history and all the data for each individual layer. So what you can do is you can create a new layer style that is saved in this library so that it's always accessible every single time. So what you do is you just select this one and we're gonna make a new layer style and we'll call this layer style watermark style. Press okay. So now if I were to go here, right click here and go clear layer styles, but then click this watermark style now everything that I do will have that watermark style when I click on that. So if I, even, when, even if I were to just go ahead and type my name, Blake Rudis, all right, maybe make that a little bit larger so we can see this in the tutorial and then boom, hit that watermark style, it's there. So it's not just for your brushes, it's for everything. So if, and this is very useful, not just for watermarking, but say there's a layer style that you use quite often, you can save it as a lib, save it into your library so you have quick access to it at all times. So we covered quite a bit here. We didn't just cover your boring, uh, bland watermark that overpowers your image. We, cre we created watermarks that seamlessly incorporate themselves into the photo so that they aren't very intrusive. We did it with brushes so that anytime you can make those brush sizes, sizes larger or smaller. Now remember, if you're using CS6, the max you're gonna hit is 25 pix 2,500 pixels. If you're using Photoshop CC, you'll be able to hit 5,000 pixels. We then created 
individual layer styles for those watermarks so that we could save it into our library and use that layer style at any time by accessing our library, no matter what we do, whether we're typing that watermark or using our brush watermark. So now you can go out, you can create better watermarks on your photographs. I know this isn't quite automated, like things like Lightroom, how they automate the watermark, but here we have much less intrusive watermark that works really well. My name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDR Insider. If you like this, please comment on it, share it. I'm sure that you have a friend out there that is doing something horrible with watermarks. So get them educated so that they can make better ones. Thank you very much for watching.